them. This Tennessee terrain is some of the roughest I've experienced for hunting elk. Rock rim, we'll find our way through it. If we can make it through the timber, the results can be outstanding. This field yesterday had so much fresh elk sign in it and the smell coming out of it was just like you had a rutted up deer in the back end of your car. The North Cumberland Wildlife Management Area is as rugged as it gets. A virtual heaven on earth for elk. They look like two five-point bulls. Brian Rochelle is an experienced deer hunter who knows that sometimes it's better to be patient and practice for a shot than it is to shoot now and miss a bigger prize later. It's a nice bull. Yeah. Boom. I'm gonna let him go. Yep. It's a good lesson Brian learned from his dad, Jasper, who's with us today. I taught him to hunt. Uh, he killed his first deer when he was 10, and I get more enjoyment out of watching him hunt and fish than I do myself. I tried to teach him, if you're gonna do something, you know, do it right. If you're not gonna do it right, don't do it. And if you're gonna kill an animal, you eat it. If you're not gonna eat it, don't kill it. It doesn't take long for our patience to pay off. We spot a massive bull elk several hundred yards away. This thing is an absolute monster. We've got to move fast if we want a chance to shoot. They're moving off into the timber, but that's okay. That's the bull we want. But to have a shot at it, we've got to move to a better position and wait. So let's get off this open hill and just sit right here in this high grass. It's time again to be patient. We're sitting here waiting, we think. You know, a lot of times when they'll go in, they'll come out in about the same place. But we got this field down here. And as you and I were talking, I'd love to be right on top. But with the way this wind keeps switching back and forth, we're going to sit here. Man, you see something like that one time and you usually don't see it again. And so I was following his lead and hopeful we would see him again, but in the back of my mind, I thought that was that one little window and it's gone. There's nothing to do but wait and hope for the best. We're losing daylight when we spot some young bulls grazing. Yeah, it's a good sign they're up and moving on it. Then more elk, cows and a calf. They're watching that wood line really hard. A good sign that something bigger is still in the woods. And then when we saw the cow start coming out of the top of the hill, that's when I started getting excited. We saw that bull with a cow that morning. You could tell he was the boss. So I felt surely he's behind them somewhere. Finally, the big boss elk makes his appearance. Yeah, here he, I see him coming. He's coming up the hill. Oh my God, I don't see him yet. That cow, that, oh wait a minute, yeah I do too, he's running. Good golly. It was like watching a hunting video on television, but in real life. And he came out, looked around, he bugled, he let everybody know he was boss, started feeding and blew my mind. We need to get over this hill and there's elk everywhere out there. We need to do it one at a time and go. So we crawl. I was just hoping they weren't gonna bust us. You know, I was like, please don't see us crawling off this hill. We got plenty of time. He's the one on the left with his head down. Okay. The wind is perfect. We're losing daylight, but there's no need to rush. If he'll move to the left about three steps, so he's clear right. right there. Anytime you're ready. Put another one in. You got him, but put him. All right, he's gone. Ryan's elk is not going down easy. All right, gotta go down there. He went over the. He went over that far rise. Nighttime is finally catching up with us. Any chance of finding the animal will have to wait till morning. I felt like you know if we stayed after him this morning, we would find him. You know, he just wasn't going to move as much. But I was pretty upset last night, you know, over that shot. The woods are thick, but we've got to find that elk. It sounds silly, but I picked up a smell. I mean, I could smell it, you know, where from him being in rut. As I veered off my path, I lost the smell. So I came back to that spot and I, I picked it back up and I just kept 
easing through, and I got down on my knee and just scanned the woods, and I saw his antlers turn just real slow. He's not going anywhere. Unload, awesome, awesome. <laughs> man, that's great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Where's the old man? I'm right here, man. <laughs> Good job, bro. Good job. Good job. Way to follow up. All right. Man, that is persistent. Way to follow up. All right. Look at the mass on this thing. Oh, I'm just glad that I found it. You know, record or not, you know, I wounded him and I was able to find him. It's a special day. Brian's bull is the biggest elk harvested since the restocking began. An eight by six trophy weighing 620 pounds. It's been an awesome hunt. I'll cherish it for the rest of my life. I don't know my dad will too. I'm Chris Nishin on Tennessee's Wild Side. <laughs> <laughs>